3,000 feathers in one Tang Xuan Zeng Lu Longji's concubine Yang Yu Huan. The beauty of Yang Guifei caused Emperor Tang Xuan Zeng to take away his son's wife, and the Yang family was thus rewarded with titles and titles of nobility for a while. A Yang Guifei made the Tang Xuan Zeng pleasure seeking dynasty politics, intensified conflicts, and finally broke out the Xi Rebellion. The pampered Yang Guifei ultimately ended up hanging from a pear tree at Marwei Slope. Shu Wenfei, Princess of Shu. Yang Yuhuan was the daughter of Yang Xuanyan, the fourth grandson of Yang Wang, the governor of Liang County at the end of the Sui dynasty. Legend has it that she was born with a jade ring on her arm, hence her name. Yang Yuhuan was a bright, intelligent, naturally attractive young woman. Unfortunately, her parents died early, and she was adopted at a young age by her uncle, Yang Xuandan, a scholar in Hunan province. As a result, she spent her teenage years in Luo. By the 22nd year of the reign 734C.D., Yang Yuhuan had already grown into a young woman, and although she was still childish, she had already fully revealed her delicate beauty. The Yang family had a beautiful girl, and the rumor spread, and Yang Xuandan, the adoptive father, was secretly proud of his daughter's beauty and favored her even more. As a result, Yu Huan indulged herself, often singing and dancing in the house, and often went out with her companions. A chance encounter with Princess Xuanyu, daughter of Emperor Xuanzang, was a turning point in her life. At a banquet at Princess Xuanyu's residence, Yang Yu Huan met the princess's younger half-brother, Li Emi, the son of the then King Shu, who fell in love at first sight with Yang Yuan's beauty. And Li Emeo, who did not yet have a consort, wanted Yang Yuhuan very much. Princess Xuanyi and King Shu were born to Emperor Tang Xuanzang's favorite concubine, Consort Wu Hui. She was the niece of Empress Wu Zixian and was deeply favored by Emperor Xuanzang. Therefore, her children were also favored by Emperor Xuanzang. King Shu was cautious, and although he was already in love with Yang Yuan, he asked his sister, Princess Xuanyi, to test her mother, Consort Wu, to see if she was interested in him. Princess Xuanyi's daughter was informed of her son's love for Yang Yuhuan and presented it to Emperor Xuanzang, who quickly acceded to Li Emeo's request. In December of the 23rd year of the reign of Emperor Kaiyuan 735, Yang Xuanxun's residence in Hunan province was bustling with activity, with more than 20 ceremony attendants standing along the bank of the Yishui River at 10 pace intervals until they reached the main gate of Yang's residence. It turned out that this was the ceremony of installing Yang Yuhuan as the consort of Li Emeo, the son of the emperor of the Great Tang Dynasty. The beautiful Yang Yuhuan finally became the consort of King Shui because of her bright eyes, white teeth, and elegant appearance. Yang Yuhuan, with her beautiful face, was favored by her husband, King Shu. In addition to going to the palace to carry out his appointed duties, King Shu gave up all kinds of things to accompany Yang Yuhuan, and even asked his mother, Consort Wu Hui, to accompany Yang Yuhuan on her trips. So Yang Yuhuan also received extra care from her mother-in-law, Consort Wu Hui. After Yang Yuhuan gave birth to her son, Consort Wu Hui often went to Shu Wan's residence and cared for Yang Yuhuan. In December of the 25th year of the reign, at the age of 40, Consort Wu suddenly fell ill and died. It was undoubtedly a catastrophe for King Shu and his wife, and the early death of his mother made his hope of being made crown prince very slim. In July of the 26th year of the reign, Emperor Xuanzang of the Tang Dynasty held a ceremony to establish the crown prince, and Li Heng was made the crown prince. Father takes son's wife. After the death of Consort Wu Hui, Emperor Xuanzang was in deep mourning. He was so depressed that he spent much time alone, except for going to court and doing his routine business. Where could he find a woman like Consort Wu Hui? Emperor Xuanzang's troubled mind was revealed by Jiaoli Tiyu. I've heard that Shu Wangfei Yang is quite similar to Consort Hui. I wonder what your majesty would like. Jiaoli she slyly pleases the emperor. Yes. The beautiful daughter-in-law Yang Yuan did have some resemblance to Princess Wu Hui. But as she was the consort of his son, King Shu, Emperor Xuanzang was puzzled and hesitant to react. However, Jiao Lishi, good at flattering the emperor, immediately understood the emperor's concern. Your majesty, don't worry. The old slave will make things reasonable. Yes. 
Xuanzang finally smiled. The fate of Yan Yu Huan, the consort of the Emperor's son, King Shu, was thus decided jokingly. King Shu Li Emeo and Yang Yu Huan never expected that the early death of consort Wu Hui would not only bring them the pain of losing the throne of the crown prince, but would also make them find it more difficult to accept their father's holy order to take away their daughter-in-law as his wife. And so the loving couple fell into an abyss of pain. In October of the 28th year of the reign of Emperor Kai Yuan 740, Emperor Xuanzang led the civil and military officials to visit the hot spring palace at Mount Li. The next day, Xuanzang sent a messenger to King Shu's residence in Chang'an, ordering his consort, Yang Yuhuan, to go to Mount Li to serve him. King Shu realized that although he loved his consort dearly, he could not disobey his father's order. Since his father had ordered Yang Yuhuan to serve the emperor, he would only incur the trouble of killing himself if he did not obey. If he did not obey, he would be killed. If he had offered his wife, he might be able to win his father's favor. And with Yang Yuan's advice in front of his father, his dream of being the crown prince might still have come true. He told Princess Yang about this idea. After hearing the proclamation, Yang Yuhuan was in a state of fear and anxiety. Still, after hearing her husband's thoughts, she felt relieved that only by obeying the emperor could she secure her good fortune. The glory of the Yang family, and the lives of her husband, King Shu's two young children, the couple said goodbye in extreme conflict and pain. And Yang Yuhuan rushed to Mount Li in the night. Under the personal arrangement of Jiao Lishi, Chen Xuanzang, who finally got Yang Yuhuan, spent soul-crushing days in his palace at Mount Li. He felt that Yang Yuhuan exuded a wild beauty compared to concubine Hui. Your Majesty, I don't have the face to return to King Shu's side again. Yang Yuan's pout caused Xuanzang a headache. Yes, Yang Yuhuan was the consort of his son, King Shu, and sharing a woman with his son was ritually unfeasible. Emperor Xuanzang could not find any excuse to take her as his consort, but he could not live without this woman, which was challenging, but he could not help it. In the first month of the following year, a beautiful female Taoist priest named Taijun came to the Taijun Palace. She was Yang Yuhuan. People thought it was incredible that the crown princess of the Tang Dynasty would become a Taoist priestess. But Emperor Xuanzang, who knew the secret, was very happy. He was pleased that the emperor would marry the Taoist priestess Yang Yuhuan instead of the princess Yang Yuhuan. In addition, the palace is located in the palace. Yang Yuhuan can enter the palace at any time for the emperor to serve the bed. The Lantern Festival was coming. On this night, Yang Yuhuan, who was in the palace, went to the street with her maid to watch the lanterns. As Yang Yuhuan moved along the crowded streets, she met Consort Emya, who had been favored by Emperor Xuanzang with her maid. Consort Emya was so jealous of Yang Yuhuan, who was the one who took the emperor away from her, that she frivolously scolded her, that foot pig. Yang Yuhuan felt so humiliated that she couldn't contain her anger. However, when she thought she was only a female Taoist priest, she suppressed her anger. Humph! One day, I will let you know how powerful I am. Yang Yuhuan felt that to change her situation, she first had to change her identity, and she could no longer be a Taoist priest. Once, Emperor Xuanzang was in high spirits and chatted with Yang Yuhuan, who suddenly shed tears and asked Emperor Xuanzang, why do you always call me Taiji, but call Princess Emiya Efe? Do you want me to be a female Taoist priest for the rest of my life? After a year in the palace, the emperor asked her to accompany him to bed almost every night. Still, she could not forget the insult at the Lantern Festival, and she wanted to take advantage of the emperor's favor to fight against concubine Emiya to get rid of her anger. From then on, the emperor affectionately called Yang Yuhuan mother and asked the people in the palace to do the same, so Yang Yuan's status was improved again. After one year in the palace, Yang Yuhuan won the emperor's favor with her beauty and character, and Emperor Xuanzang favored her more than concubine Wu and concubine Emiyai. The emperor shared many of the same interests with Yang Yuhuan, who knew the rhythm of music and could sing and dance well. Coupled with her intelligence and talent for pandering increasingly enamored the emperor, who entrusted Li Linfu with military affairs to accompany Yang Yuhuan in her pleasures. Having heard and witnessed the cruelty of court life, Yang Yuhuan felt more and more that to secure her position in the court, 
She had to stifle others and kill everyone in her way. She realized that she couldn't secure her position in the court on her own and had to build up her network and seek help from the party. In Yuan's opinion, Jieo Lishi, a tall man with small, cunning eyes, was the mastermind behind Emperor Xuanzang's plan to bring her into the palace, and he could be used as an accomplice. One day, Yang Yuhuan invited Jie Lishi to her palace, the first time she was alone with him. After that, Yang Yuhuan discussed everything with Jie Lishi, and the two had frequent exchanges, with Jie Lishi arranging suitable positions for each member of the Yang family. Yang Yuhuan was so crucial to Emperor Xuanzang that he almost forgot all of the women except her. To make Yang Yuhuan happy, Emperor Xuanzang and his ministers tried their best to please Yang Yuhuan. The ministers knew Emperor Xuanzang would be happy if the woman he favored were happy. In the first month of the second year of Qianbao 7 for 3, Emperor Xuanzang ordered a grand reception for a new Shan, a Hu general from the northern border. Yang Yuhuan was incredulous at the emperor's interest in Anu Shan. She had already heard that Anu Shan had been appointed as the military ambassador of Pinglu and the governor of Yingzhou. And then in the first year of Qianbao, he was promoted to be the governor of Pinglu, making him the first Hu governor in the Tang dynasty. And Anu Shan was in control of military, civil, and financial affairs on the northern border. When Yang Yuhuan accompanied Emperor Xuanzang to see Anu Shan approaching the emperor in the Great Hall, she almost laughed out loud. Was this fat, jaw-droppingly dignified man the same Anu Shan who had a variety of touching legends and was known for his bravery? However, what surprised Yang Yuhuan even more was that Anu Shan did not bend down to bow to Emperor Xuanzang but bent down to bow to Yang Yuhuan. Emperor Xuanzang tried it. Ah, oh, miscellaneous who? Why do you only bow to your consort and not to me? Since I was a child, I have only bowed to my mother. I only know that it was my mother who gave birth to me. And as to who my father was, that is hard to tell, so I always bow to the female first. Yang Yuhuan laughed, and inwardly she could not help but feel good about him. So Emperor Xuanzang did not pursue the matter further. To reward Anu Shan, Emperor Xuanzang gave him a lot of gold, silver and jewels, and appointed him as the Fanyang Provincial Governor and the Hubei Interviewer. In a short time, Anu Shan added 100,000 men to his army, and took control of the military and political power on the northern border. Afterwards, Anu Shan asked Yang Yuhuan to be his godmother, and Emperor Xuanzang agreed. Yang Yuhuan was surprised, but then she thought that having such a military general with real power in the region, as her godson would not be bad for her on her way to becoming a noble consort. The palace held a series of feasts to celebrate Yang Yuan's acceptance of Anu Shan as her godson. Emperor Xuanzang spent the day in a state of rage in the palace. He had been on the throne for dozens of years, but no one dared to be so outrageous. He hoped the princess would admit her mistake, but she was even more stubborn. In the evening, the emperor finally became impatient and ordered the meal to be sent to the Yang residence. The next day, there were a dozen palace cars to bring the clothes and dozens of maids serving your consort. The clever Yang Guifei understood that the emperor was no longer angry. On the fifth night of Yang Guifei's departure from the palace, Xuanzang sent Jieo Lishi to welcome her back to the palace. Yang Guifei is seen early standing there waiting for their emperor. Just five days have yet to be seen, and Xuanzang is much older. At this moment, she realized her position in the emperor's heart. Then Emperor Xuanzang of Tang ordered a banquet in the palace to relieve the shock of the concubine, gave the concubine a variety of minor artifacts, and gave her sisters tens of millions of dollars a year to pay for their cosmetics. The young family was saved from the danger and for this reason, received many rewards which they had never expected. Yang Guifei still live a life of luxury, tribute from various countries to the pearl and gemstones, exotic flowers and plants, Guifei very much like, have to see personally. Hence, the competition for tribute became a fashion. Many of the exquisite rare things in the box of Guifei are Lingyan festival minister Zhang Jujian and Guangling governor Wang Yi's tribute, and they were also promoted to the official rank. Yang Guifei loved to eat lychee. Ripe Xuanzang ordered the Lingyan magistrate to choose the best, from Lingyan to Chang'an on the official road without stopping day and night to send a particular person to send. It can be said that a ride on the red dust princess laughs. No one knows his lychee too. 
who knows that Yang Guifei was once again expelled from the palace in the spring of the following year. It turned out that Yang Guifei had heard that the king of Ening had a jade flute that could play beautiful sounds, so she sent someone to borrow it to play. It was not proper to lend the flute of King Ening, the younger brother of Emperor Xuanzang, to Yang Guifei. When Emperor Xuanzang saw the flute playing princess, he was furious and ordered him to leave the palace immediately and move to Yangshan's residence. Once again, a somber mood hangs over Yang's mansion. Starting from Mrs. Guoguo, all the relatives of the Yang family once again gather in Yangshan's residence to discuss countermeasures. The Yangs feel that the happy life will never return and the Yang family will be weakened and even killed. But the clouds of sadness enveloped the Yang residence and lasted only for days. On the fourth night, Xuanzong sent the Chamberlain Zhang Taoguang, sent the Imperial Meal, and the consort's hanging heart was finally put down. So Yang Guifei cut a strand of her hair and wrapped it in a handkerchief and gave it to Zhang Taoguang, and then gave her a short note and asked her to present it to His Majesty. I have no regrets for my death, but I hope that Your Majesty will take care of Your Majesty's holy body and that Your Majesty's great kindness to the Yang family is something that I will not dare to want my life. I want to dedicate a strand of my hair to your majesty as a souvenir. Seeing the strand of hair, Xuanzang felt a pain in his heart and immediately sent Jiyo Lishid to welcome the concubine back to the palace. Returning to the palace again, Yang Guifei was even more favored, and Emperor Xuanzang immediately satisfied any request from Yang Guifei. The five households of the Yang clan received many rewards as a result. Yang Guifei was secretly happy that after this incident, her relationship with the emperor was misplaced and that the emperor was no longer just fond of her but was morbidly obsessed with her. Tianbao 14 years 755 November 9th and Nu Shan to kill Yang Guozhong in the name of the Fanying now Beijing. Led by 150,000 Hu and Han troops and horses drove southward. Pointing directly to Chang'an and Nu Shan to 10,000 people cannot be stopped by the courage of a succession of conquests of cities around the Great Tang. On December 13th, a new Shan captured Blue When the news came, Yang Guifei spent her days in fear and anxiety. Yang Guifei realized that she would never be able to escape from this disaster. And she told Jiao Lishi that she would die for her country. As the soldiers gathered, Jiao Lishi, to avoid endangering the Emperor's life, passed the message Your Majesty. Give the princess death to the Emperor. The soldiers cheered. Long live the Emperor. Yang Guifei ended her life in the pear tree before the Buddha Hall at Marwei at 38. Yang Guifei, a great beauty, enjoyed all the glory and wealth of the world, but in the end, it wasn't easy to end well.